Last week, we introduced six levels of engaging God's Word. Uh, the first one was hearing, we talked about last week, and this week, uh, we're going to look at the second level, and that is reading. Uh, when we engage in all six levels, we get a firm grip on God's Word. Today, uh, we want to learn three important things. First of all, uh, God's Word is our spiritual food. It's, it's meant to fuel and sustain us uh, our, for our spiritual growth. Uh, secondly, we learn some practical su suggestions and tips for reading God's Word. And then thirdly, uh, we'll learn some of the spiritual nutrients that are found in the Scriptures in the form of blessings and admonitions. All of this with the goal of challenging us to make a commitment to engage the scriptures regularly by reading them so that, to, that we can make progress in, in regarding our uh, salvation. So let's begin our session by connecting Jesus' parables of the soils with Peter's letter to struggling believers. We'll see that the seed of God's word that regenerates us also sustains us. And Peter writes to believers that are scattered across the Roman Empire, yet they're called to live holy lives. From this context of suffering and a challenge to live a godly life, uh, Peter reminds them in 1 Peter 1, 23 and 25, says, For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. For all men are like grass and all their glory like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and flowers fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. At salvation, we get on track with Jesus, but due to the hazards of life, potential for derail is it's always out there. But God's word is like a seed planted that brings forth good fruit in our lives. The seed is imperishable because it's God breathed. It is living and active, as the writer of Hebrews says in chapter 4, verse 12. And so there's nothing like it. It's, it's God-breathed. It's eternal and enduring, as Isaiah writes in chapter 40. Not only can God's Word regenerate us from death to life, as in John 12 we read in verse 24, but, but also can empower us to live a holy life, which is just what we want to do. Peter then draws a powerful comparison in uh, 1 Peter 2, 2 we read, Like newborn babes uh, crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Thus we have the reason that God's word can empower us to live lives that are pleasing to him is because his word is our spiritual food. It is where we get our nourishment. From. Throughout the scripture, God's word is likened uh, to milk, uh, bread, meat, honey. No doubt, young Timothy was raised on a healthy diet of scripture from a believing mother and a grandmother. Um, as Paul notes in 2 Timothy chapter 3, our focal passage for our series, he knew what he knew from the sacred writings because as a young child he had been read to, and as he grew up, he read it for himself. So we can say with confidence, the seed of God's word that regenerates us can also sustain us. If, and that's a big if, if we partake of it, if we, if we eat it. Now we see that we grow in our faith by feeding on God's word. You are what you eat. I mean, that goes physically and it goes spiritually as well. You can't just eat on Sunday and expect that to get you through the rest of the week. You know, the devil doesn't take days off. And, and if we're getting God's word into us, uh, then we're filling ourselves up with truth. All right? And the devil would love to take you and me on spiritually empty. And we know this about the devil, he can't handle the truth. So if you and I are getting the word of God, the word of truth into us, it starts coming out. And that's our, that's our first line of defense. So, and there's this. There are many believers who have been disciples for a long time who are still infants. 
Now that's not entirely their fault. A lot of folks have uh, come to faith in Christ. Maybe they had a Bible thrown at them. Maybe they were discipled. And we got to, frankly, we think we know that most probably aren't. So a lot of folks uh, weren't taught to grow up. Again, that is why we're doing this series together, to try to help us to all get into the Word so we all come together and grow up. And I, I know that it's a difficult thing to do, but this, this is why we're in it. I mean, is we're getting into the Word so that it does get in us so that we'll live it. Uh, the writer of Hebrews uh, makes a point in uh, Hebrews 5, 11 through 14. says, we have much to say about this, but it's hard to explain because you are slow to learn. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, uh, still being still an infant, is not acquainted with their teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. If you're not in the Word, how do you even know right from wrong? It's no wonder that so many Christians uh, are confused, frustrated, defeated, discouraged even. They don't know what they have in Christ who is, again, the living word, because they haven't read the written word. Uh, it, it makes a whole lot of difference in your life when you know what you've got in Christ, the, the promises, the things that you can stand on. And Paul talks about that a lot, about stand firm, you know, and we can't stand firm if we don't know what we're standing on. So feed the spirit, starve the flesh. We can only grow up strong in the Lord when we lay aside or, or let's say starve the old self and be renewed in the spirit of our minds and put on the new self. So we wanna leave you with a few practical tips. Uh, first of all, you can do this, it's simple. Download the free YouVersion app. Man, that app for your Bible on your smartphone or device, whatever that is, is easy to use. I mean, it's, it's, it's tough to beat. I mean, there's a lot of apps out there, but uh, it ha gives you a variety of uh, English translations to read from. It uh, gives you tons of devotions that you can utilize. Uh, it has a word search in there. If you remember part of a verse, you can type in the words and find it. Uh, it even gives you accountability. If you're friends with other people on there, they can know when you're reading something and when you're not, uh, if you desire to uh, use that part of it. It's a good idea to, to read or listen to different English translations. Uh, that's helpful. Uh, you might try out the uh, New King James, uh, the ESV, the, the NLT. Uh, we have found that the best English translation is the one that you'll actually read. Uh, so, so I'd suggest you do that because, you know, the Bible was written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. So you're okay on the English translation that you pick. Uh, also, it's good to incorporate variety in your reading plans. Uh, by, you know, by doing that, uh, you know, reading, some, reading from different ones, uh, like we talked about there, uh, kind of helps you, which, you know, it, it just, it just, it's very helpful. Uh, Howard Hendricks uh, suggests to read repeatedly. Um, we did this recently in my, one of my groups. Uh, we were getting ready for the series, and so uh, we just kind of ended the year. We kind of read uh, books of the Bible that had four or five chapters just, you know, in a row daily. And, you know, we found out about the second and third week, you know, we actually understood more uh, by reading it that way. So, you know, read repeatedly. Read patiently as God is speaking to you as you're reading it. Read it. Sit down and read. Don't, this is not a speed read. You get more out of it when you read patiently. And, uh, and then read imaginatively. Just, uh, just take the time to sit, sit back and let God's Word speak to you. And imagine, the, imagine even the context, the scene, what's going on, you know. 
you know, when you're reading about that, when you're reading about a shipwreck in, in the Bible, you know, think about, man, what, what was really going on? You we know, were talking about how the, new, the believers were dealing with the Roman Empire and such. You know, what were they really going to? You know, stop and think about what's really uh, going on there. Um, but in you know, our conclusion for this, this setup today, uh, you know, let me say this. We must read God's Word to grow in our faith because it is our spiritual food. You got to read it. And so if you're like many of us, let's just be honest. A lot of, we know a lot of believers, a lot of us haven't been reading it in these many of the ways we talked about today, uh, if even consistently. So as we end this session, I want to challenge you. How would you evaluate your present spiritual diet of God's Word? Just be honest with God about that. It's, you know, it's not going to help us if we're not honest about that. Uh, also, the paradox of Bible reading is the more you read, the hungrier you are for God's Word. And the less you read, the less of an appetite you have. How hungry are you? To what lengths will you go to feed your spirit with the good food of God's Word? What commitment to daily reading of Scripture is God leading you to make? And you know what? We've got some people. We started out this year. We're just reading a chapter here and there a little bit. But we're going to break out a plan here uh, soon that we'll read a couple of chapters a day. You know what? If you can read more and you want to read more, read more. If if two chapters is too much you know read you know what just start getting into god's word what so you pray about it god what commitment uh do you want me to make and then you honor that